information. I want to take you through the next uh, next few minutes and identifying what that information is and the relevance and importance of that information that is necessary to first of all quote and then design a gaseous extinguishing system. So the information that we need, we need to know the design standard. What is the design standard that the specifier, the consultant, uh, the end user is expecting that system to comply with? And the fire class, whether it's a class A, B or, or C type fire. That is very important because that will determine the design concentration used for the system. System approval requirements. We're very familiar in the UK with LPCB as an approval. Uh, we're going to Europe, and VDS and CNPP. We're going to the Middle East, it's ULFM. We're going to Australia, it's the uh, CERO, Russia's GOST. And there's a very difference in the way that those agencies actually apply their, uh, their, their standards to the various systems. Some agents have very specific rules and design concentrations. You know, so if you're designing a system according to VDS rules, you're likely to find that the concentration is significantly higher than if you're designing it to an FPA. Minimum hazard temperature, very important because the design of a system has to be based on the minimum hazard temperature. The lower the temperature, the more gas that you actually need. So the higher the temperature, the, the, the reduced amount, but well, that also becomes relevant because that will also affect the achieved concentration in the room should that system discharge. The altitude of the hazard, the higher we go above sea level, the lower the, the uh, volume requirement for the gas. Hazard dimensions, including details about the shape and, the, and uh, any associated voids. Does the enclosure have ceiling voids, floor voids? Are those subdivided? Uh, are there any special conditions there? Details of the AC system, and that's often overlooked, very important, that may affect the way that the detection system is configured, it can certainly affect the way that the nozzles are positioned and generally how the system is, uh, is designed. Place and space for the agent containers, whether we like it or not there is a certain footprint associated with the cylinders, that could be quite a large footprint with uh, an inert gas system, it could be a reduced footprint with a halocarbon system. Other requirements, is there a need for a main and reserve? So in other words, if that system goes off, how tolerant is the end user or the application to having that system back up and running within six hours, 24 hours, three weeks? And that you know, could actually affect whether you go for a main or reserve supply. Hazardous areas could affect the type of equipment supplied, whether it's a flame-proof area or a regular risk. And then the associated systems, for example, with the uh, detection systems or any other building interface um, system that may be in some way linked to the gas system. So hazard and volume details, always use the gross volume. You know, there is a tendency for people to look at volume, in particular if it's archive storage, if it's um, a room with lots of data processing equipment to say, well, okay, I know that the volume is 100 cubic meters, uh, but I can see that there is about 20 cubic meters there that is taken up by equipment or, or materials in the room. The design rules unanimously require you to ignore that, that uh, associated volume. The only thing that you may deduct from that volume is solid impermeable building material. So if it's a column or beams or, or something of that nature, then you can actually deduct that from the gross volume. But anything else must be, uh, must be ignored. We need to know the depth and the, and the height of the ceiling voids and the floor voids. If they're present, the standard in, in Europe is to protect them. If it's a, a, a US spec, sometimes it's not absolutely or considered absolutely necessary to protect the ceiling void. We fundamentally disagree in Europe, uh, but that is the, uh, the US way of doing some of these things. And if, um, if it is a, a US spec and you're looking at the uh, design configuration, then you would need to look at the NFPA standard there to uh, determine the exact requirements.